Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mike Pinkus Fitness Podcast. And we are back on track after a extended summer. Um, but we have a special guest. Uh, I keep saying special guest because everyone's special, to me at least. But um, this is somebody that I have known, and I'm going to sh- kind of probably shock her because she has not listened to Tyla's uh, last episode. And I've actually known her longer than she realizes. Um, and to me, I know her as Linda Weiler. Um, you go by Linda Griffith? No. No? I do. Okay. Yeah. So, welcome to the show. Um, Thanks for having me. So, I'm going to go back and just give you a little background. I was, uh, I started in the industry, in the fitness industry, back in Chicago in '87. And in '88, uh, I worked at one club in '87. '88, got a new job at a uh, club in Rolling Meadows, uh, Illinois, just a suburb outside of Chicago. And it's called the Continental Club. And it would be today, it's, it's a corporate gym. It's in uh, corporate towers. It'd be similar to the Warner Center Club. Think mm-hmm. of it like that. And had racquetball, had aerobics studio. We had an aerobics instructor. Uh, I don't remember her last name. Her first name was Wendy. And Wendy had sometime in 88... 89, it was definitely before July of 89, because that's when I moved out here, but sometime late 88, early 89, um, she had come to California uh, for a workshop for aerobics. And she came back, and she's talking about all these instructors from California. And boy, are they just doing things we've never even thought of. Because at the time, as you know, um, LA and New York were the hotbeds. Right. Um, everything else kind of eventually found itself. Chicago eventually became uh, one of them as well. And uh, she was telling us all about this stuff, but I didn't know anything about aerobics. I mean, what, oh, I didn't tell Tyler this, but I was 18 or 19 years old. She convinced me to teach an ab class to the 6 a.m. crew. I had to do abs for a half hour. Um, that's all I was supposed to do was abs. And I, I think back now I couldn't even do abs for a half hour. Um, <laughs> had to do it to music. She didn't tell me how to do beat count, nothing. So I just played what I liked. And back in the day was Yaz. So like the whole, love that <laughs> the whole album was like, well, this song works. Oh, this one's bad. So I didn't even have, I would just fast forward. I'm like, hang on guys, keep going, keep going. I'd fast forward on the tape machine. Okay, we're good. And then I get back into it. That turned into abs, buns, and thighs because then some of the the women started coming in. And again, I'm 18, 19 years old and 6 a.m. class. These, again, think Warner Center Club. So after the class, they're going to go shower and go to work. So I had these 30-year-old females in my class and my boss at the time said, I can't believe how your 6 a.m. class is packed. Yeah. And then he comes in, and we had a viewing area, kind of like we had at the sport house, and he watches, and he's just shaking his head. He's like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Um, for some reason, I decided to purchase um, black and blue flamed legging tights that uh, Eddie Van Hale, uh, uh, David Lee Roth would wear. <laughs> and I had a T. Michael tank top on. Spandex, of course. Of course, total spandex. And my Reebok high tops with my scrunch socks. And that's what I taught uh, class in. I had no idea what the heck I was doing. But in any case, um, and I actually found a picture of that, of me playing racquetball in that, and it will never be seen. Oh, my, yes, it will. No, never, never it. be seen. We're going to archive <laughs> it. <laughs> Nobody will find where that thing's at. So anyways, um, yeah. So Wendy was, uh, so I come out here uh, to California in uh, July of 88 to visit my best friend. And then in July, uh, well, basically around April, May of 89, uh, he convinced me to move out here. And so when I was quitting work, I had told my boss where I'm going to be um, living. And she's like, you know, those, those women that I took that rope, uh, aerobic workshop from, I think live in that area, that part of <laughs> Southern California. And she said, Tyler Patterson, Linda Weiler, Linda Shelton, 
um, those were the three names. I'm like, okay, and I just remember those names. I get a job at the sport house two weeks after I move out here. And the big aerobic studio's going, the music is pumping loud, and I'm up on the catwalk looking, walking across, going to the trainer's room. And this particular day, and I was telling this to Tyler, it was you and Tyler either co-teaching or you were taking class or back and forth. I'm not sure what it was, but the place was packed. Three, three racquetball courts blowing out the walls, all, and it was packed. Now, keep in mind, back in Sport House Day, or um, Continental Club, where I was working, a great instructor had 25 people in right. the class. Yeah. Okay. So I come to the Sport House in Westlake, and I'm seeing 80, 90, 100 people. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing people being turned away because there's just not enough room. Yeah. I don't understand what's going on here. I end up going back in December of 89 and I saw Wendy and I said, you'll never guess. I said, these are the two of these, or actually Linda Shelton was there too. Occasionally. Yes, she uh, these three women teach at this, uh, at the gym that I'm training at. And it was absolutely amazing. So I knew of you guys well before I ever got out here. Wow. Yeah. And Tyla had never heard that either. And she's like, that's nuts. You never say anything. I'm like, what was I going to say? I mean, to me, you guys were celebrities. Aww. I mean, it was really cool to, to see it all unfold. So that was the start of it all uh, for me. Um, all right. So I'm going to take you down a little memory lane. Yeah. If you guys hear any acorns, we are. Oh, is that what it yeah, is? Yeah. So the, we have, uh, we're in my gym and on the roof, you'll occasionally, the microphones may pick it up, but, uh, we get pelted with acorns. Sounds like golf balls. Nice. Yeah, as long as that tree doesn't come down, we're fine. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's start. Where did you grow up? Um, I was born in New York. Okay. Where? In, um, Manhattan. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, First Avenue. Really? And uh, yeah, I'm Italian, Italian on both sides of my family. Okay. So my grandmother, my grandparents actually lived on Mulberry Street until they passed away. And then uh, when I was five, my parents decided that they didn't want me to go to school in New York mm -hmm. uh, and moved to New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And then I lived there until I was 21. And um, I was always into, you know, fitness and running track in school, like, I, I have two sisters. I'm the only one that uh, had anything to do with fitness. But my dad was a professional uh, um, archer, and hmm. uh, he actually wound up getting his uh, captain's license, and he had an amazing fishing boat and deep-sea fishing. And So I guess I, as the oldest one, went with him and did a bunch of that stuff. And then uh, when I was... I guess I was 26, 27. I moved out here. Okay. And um, that's how I got into this crazy business. Very cool. Um, what was your favorite memory as a kid um, back in New Jersey? Because you left New York at the age of five? Five, yeah. Okay, so probably more New Jersey that you remember. What's your favorite memory as a kid growing up? Um, I think when I moved to New Jersey, there was uh, that that experience of living kind of like in the country. So when we moved uh, from New York to New Jersey, um, I lived and went to school with kids that like rode horses to school. <laughs> so I lived in the boonies. So you go from like Manhattan, right, city city, yeah. And uh, so I lived there for a long time. And I, you know, lakes, you lived around lakes and right. uh, the Jersey Shore, <laughs> which nowadays is kind of like, whoever would have thought the Jersey Shore exactly. uh, is so popular. Was that, did you enjoy the, um, more of that country life? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, I, I was, I was definitely into all of that stuff. Yeah. You know, um, when you live close to, you know, I'm a water person. Give me any form of water and I'm good. You're good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, where'd you go to high school? In a, a, in a town called West Milford, New Jersey. That's where people rode horses to school. Really? Yeah. So there were a couple, there was a place called Lindy Lake, Okay. like right around my neighborhood. Like you had to drive three miles to get there and, um, like you could swim huge lake. 
And then in the wintertime, it would freeze over and everybody yep. would grab their skates. And, you know, I grew up in that environment yeah, right. where you didn't have to, you know, pay to get on the lake. Yep. Everybody that lived in the community, people lived in authentic log cabins. Like my friend, my favorite friends lived in authentic log cabins. That's so cool. We had in Chicago, so I lived in the suburbs of Chicago, and we had lakes as well, and they would freeze over. And, and I think back of every winter, we'd have a new guinea pig to go out, and we'd put a rope on them. <laughs> yeah, or to see how and, far that they yeah, could go. To see how far out they can go to know that it was truly frozen over. Because if it wasn't, he fell in, you pulled him out. Right. And that's the way we tested it, and it worked. And there was no waiver to sign. There, nobody sued anybody for the kid went in. Right. And his parents found out, like, well, you dumbass. Why were you, well, it was my turn this year. Yeah. You know, last year someone else did it. And um, I remember putting skates on and going skating and thinking, this we're all good. And all of a sudden, there's a crack. It's like off the ice and everyone right. off. No problem. Go to the next lake. Right. And just wait till it froze over and it was fine. I could, that's when life was easy. Yeah, it totally was. Simple. I mean, I think back... Now, on remember that commercial that they used to say, it's 10 o'clock, do you know where your children are? Yes. Well, everybody <laughs> knew where you were, exactly. you know, because it, you were yeah. in that loop of... Yeah, that's of, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a yeah. lot of stuff to do. It's uh, so much easier. I know. Uh, did you play sports in high school? I did. I ran track. Okay. Any particular event? Um, I did like the 440 okay. relay. Yeah. I was good. Yeah. I was short, but I was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, after high school, what route did you go? Um, after high school, that's a really good question because I graduated in 1974. <laughs> Do the math, children. <laughs> um, so 1974, um, that was still like, believe it or not, I, I, I was a musician then. Were you really? Yeah, I played guitar. Do you still play? Yeah. No way. Way. That's awesome. Yeah, like Joni Mitchell. You know, right. everybody was hippy dippy. I still wear a patchouli. What's a patchouli? It's like it's it's um, body oil. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, got it. So uh, people smell it. They're like, "What is that smell?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I know. It's not. It's not burning incense. It's patchouli oil." <laughs> um, so I my actually my uncle taught me how to play guitar. So wow. I got into music a lot. Very cool. Sing it all. Uh-huh. No way. Way. I've known you this many years and these I like, know. This is what's crazy. I actually sang at a club where Linda Ronstadt sang in New York City. That's nuts. And remember the I Love New York thing? Yeah. Yeah, I did I did some of that. Really? Yeah. That's I so... love New York. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I know. Uh side note, I just found out that Katie Couric is a major pianist. You're kidding. No. It happened to be on Facebook this morning, and somebody posted something, and I had this huge crush on Katie Couric forever. And then I find I out I forgot where I plays, met her. I forgot where piano. I met her. Where, does she, where is she now? I have no idea. Hmm. I have no idea. But this was a video of her playing the piano, and she's really good. I'm like, oh, that just took her up a whole other level. I mean, I, I thought I was going to be a musician. Wow. I know. It's not too late. Oh, no. No? Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so... I still want to put my spandex on then. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll get to that. So you leave New Jersey at the age of 21, mm -hmm. and you come out here, California. I did. What brings you out to California? So I got married when I was really young, mm -hmm. and uh, my husband at the time, his parents moved out here. Okay. And then we just decided to move out here, so... Um, at the time, I can't remember exactly where, what was happening. Um, maybe some of the casinos, um, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my husband was in heating and air conditioning. Mm. So we moved out here and then, um, I wound up living in Newbury park off of Ventu park road. Out of all places to move. Too. Yep. Newbury Park. And what year was this? It had to be 1980. And this place was empty. 
I mean, you could shit a shoot. You could have shot a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> shit a canyon. You, you could, could still do that, Mike. Yeah, you can shoot a cannon through that whole area. Yeah. I mean, Dos Vientos, nothing was there. I know. There was I know. Nothing there. Was Crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. So, twenty-one, living in Newbury Park, and what are you doing? Um, are you working at this time? So. Actually, when I moved here in 1980, um, I think I was a little bit older than that. So I ha- I got pregnant, mm-hmm. had my son. Mm-hmm. I think I was 27. Okay. And um, I met a girl in the in the neighborhood that I lived at, and she had a, a son that was around the same age, and. Um, she worked for her father Mm -hmm. and I had this great idea that I was going to put it out in the newspaper because I'm a clean freak Mm -hmm. on top of, I'm a type personality, excessive compulsive overachiever, you know, the good Um, ones are right. I was going to be a, I was going to clean people's houses and rake in the money. So I put an ad in the local (laughs) newspaper. My phone rang off the hook now, at the time, my husband and I only had one car, so I put my son in a stroller and walked in the winter, bundled him up, and walked from place to place. In the winter in Southern California. Yeah. Well, it was cold at that time. <laughs> yeah. but, We're not feeling that yeah, sorry for you. Right. <laughs> not and, in New uh, Jersey winter. I made a lot of money. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I was able to make a good living doing that. So, you know, for... The younger listeners, and we're going to get to this eventually, but for the younger listeners that are in the fitness industry or wanting to get in the fitness industry or even outside of the fitness industry, the the ones that I consider the great ones within the industry um, that have um, created the path, led the path, lit the path for all of us um, ahead of us, there's the there is a common thread, and you're going to hear it on all my podcasts. Tyler talked about it. Uh, a few of my upcoming guests will not even realize it, but they will talk about it. And it is the simple word of grit, mm-hmm. hustle, right. willing to do anything and everything. You were nothing was beneath you. Nothing. And I get so many trainers today that they meet me. They have heard my story. And they recently even went through certification and they come out and they want to charge, you know, over a hundred dollars an hour and they want clients now. Right. I'm like, you don't understand. You don't even have the hustle, the grit, what it takes to even be believable. And they don't even have the experience behind it. Yeah. And that's like, oh yeah, absolutely. But it's, they don't even understand um, and, and man, I'm not trying to age myself here in any way, but I'll go for it. <laughs> they have no idea what hard work is. They have right. no idea what it means to, um, figure things out on your own. Nothing is handed to you. There's no sense of entitlement. Um, I mean, you're willing to do whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember working, uh, my first job and he said, go clean the toilets. I'm like, okay, where's the stuff? And I'd never cleaned toilets. I didn't clean toilets at home. Um, but we did it. And why? Because there was no cleaning crew back in the day right. at these gyms. They couldn't afford it. So that's what the staff did. And you did it without question. Mm-hmm. Um, it was part of your job. Right. So, I mean, I think of the average trainer today getting out of uh, NASM and getting a job at a corporate gym and handing them a toilet brush and say, go for it. They look at you like, what the heck am I going to do with this thing? Right. It's not heavy enough to lift. Right. So anyway, so back to you, cleaning, uh, cleaning houses, did all that. Um, what gets you into the fitness industry? Okay. So this is really interesting. So this girl that I met yeah. with same, same, same son, age. Yep. son, same, same, same age. age. Yep. Um, she said to me, you got to go to this gym. Let's go to the gym. And I thought, okay, like I had baby weight to get off of me. I thought, okay. You had baby weight. 
Yeah. yeah I, when you show me that picture, I'll show you the picture. Of me oh, my God. I'll show you. Yeah. I had a goiter. It like all molded together. Anyway. Yeah, right. So we wound up going over to the Westlake Sport House. Okay. Now, interesting. You bypassed Body Focus. I did bypass. From that. Newbury Park. Yeah. You went to Westlake Sport House. I thought you were for sure you were saying Body Focus. Um, I may house. have I may have stuck a toe in there okay. at one point. Yep. But I remember the the sport house was yep. like a big deal. Yep. I, that was the big cow. Absolutely. And uh, I went in there and stood in the back of the room and did my thing. And one of the instructors came up to me after class and said, you know, you're better than some of the teachers here. You should be, you should teach. And I thought, okay. 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 Yeah. 35 years later. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's how it started. That's it. That was it. That's and crazy. I knew, like, I originally, in, in some of my heyday, you know, after high school in New Jersey, I, I went to college and I wanted to be, I wanted to become a phys ed teacher. Mm-hmm. So my, my aunt at the time lived in uh, Long Island, <laughs> Long Island, New York. There it is. Yeah. She was a PE teacher, right? And at that time, can I say this? You say anything you want. You know, you were, it was a little butch to be, you know, sure. a PE teacher. You know, right. you had that little short hair and the whistle and the little tutu. Yep. And I thought, nah, I'm not wearing that. No. <laughs> no, I don't, don't want to go that route. And uh, plus, a lot of the phys ed teachers said, you'll never get in. You have to die to get into the business because it's a cush job. Yep. Right? You have yeah. paid vacation. Yeah. You uh, have paid all the paid school holidays. Right. And uh, then I thought, mm, I don't know. Yeah. The butch thing. Let's, I don't know if I'm going to want that. So anyway, um, I, I got into the business wow. and started teaching. Yep. And when I first started teaching, um, I, the man who owned the gym at the time, can I say that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I believe his name was uh, Denny Bauer. Wow, that's a name. Remember for Denny? Yes. And his wife, LaVon. Wow. We're not going to go, LaVon. Uh, love you there. If you're still there, LaVon. Um, anyway, Denny Bauer was the owner. He that was, was before... Um, Vita? Well, what before Vita? That yeah. was before Susan, Susan yes. Glass. Susan Glass. And... Uh, yes, that was definitely before yeah, Susan was before Glass. Susan. I think Susan came at the tail end yes. of Denny. Yep. Totally forgot about Denny. Wow. Okay, so go on. The only guy that I knew that had a Rolls Royce. Yes. That drove, remember that? He drove yes. to the gym. Absolutely. So Linda Shelton yep. uh, actually was teaching. And, um, of course, I think she might have still been working for Shape at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, came in and saw my, me teaching class and came up to me at the end of my class. And she said, uh, and I love Linda, Linda, she said, you know, you would be dangerous if somebody really got their hands on you and Mm -hmm. trained you. And that started me getting, uh, certified, Mm -hmm. um, learning from a lot of the I consider still to this day the top people in the industry and people right. that were mentors for me. Right. Yeah. Um, I was in the right place at, at the, the right, right time. time. Yeah. Yeah. And I can say that about my career as well. No, I think it was the spandex outfit that, <laughs> and how cute you were. <laughs> that could be. That, that's well, part of it. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> geez. So, and it's funny because people say that it's luck, and I don't believe in luck. I believe you put yourself at the right place at the right time. Right. Everything, every step of the way. Um, you saw an opportunity. You met this woman. You both have uh, sons the same age. She's like, hey, let's go to the gym. Okay, you're open to it. So you put yourself in the right place, right time. Um, so it wasn't anything about luck. Um, but you see an opportunity, and you're willing to take it. And so here Linda Shelton comes up to you with, and you without an ego says, I'm in. Right. Like you know. I, I was just like, take me. Right. 
Absolutely. I'll, I'll absorb everything that yep. I could get. Absolutely. All right. So we're now into the mid eighties, um, teaching aerobics. Are you only at the sport house? Or are you elsewhere teaching? Wow. These are good questions. Right. Um, when I first started at the sport house, um, I was probably there for a couple of years until I started doing all these workshops through, at the time I, w- I uh, got certified through AFA, mm-hmm. which is the Aerobics and Fitness Association of America, and um, found this amazing lady who at the time, uh, her name is Candace Copeland, and now she goes by Candace Copeland Brooks. And, uh, Wait, did she marry Douglas Brooks? Yeah. Oh my, yeah. talk about a power couple. Yeah, right. Holy moly. So I went to, at the time she worked on Melrose Avenue at a place called Body Express. Mm-hmm. So I started going and taking classes from her and from a, another woman that worked with Candace, Sherry Mandon, who was actually mar- married to the Mandon on TV. Um, I forget her husband's name. Sherry, if you're listening to me, I forgot. Sorry. Um, Anyway, everybody that was anybody that was a so-called celebrity in the fitness industry worked for Candace. Wow. And Candace was this cute little woman. And to this day, um, I adored her. I kept going back and forth and taking classes so I would bring whatever I learned from her right. back to, okay. the, to the sport house. Yep. So I was going into Hollywood, West mm-hmm. Hollywood, traveling back and forth and bringing back stuff that I thought was really cool. Right. Cutting edge stuff. Cutting and, edge yeah, stuff. That no one had seen. Do you remember when you met Tyla? I met Tyla, I think, right away okay. at the sport house. I think Tyla was... I think Tyler was working for uh, Body Focus first, I think. I think so. And then she came over when, I'm pretty sure Denny Bauer, yeah, for sure, when Denny was there. Okay, all right. Yeah. And then, um, did you ever teach at the firm? I did. Yeah. So I, and that's part of the other part of the story is, so when I moved out here, I got a job at the sport house working the morning shift from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. I would get on the freeway and get to the firm at 3 o'clock, and I work from 3 to 10. Which is in uh, Warnerson? No. Um, it's near, it's um, off of um, Canoga and Oxnard, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It became L.A. Workout. Yeah. Uh, but it was the firm, and Tyler was there, and I thought I remember seeing you uh, teach there as well. Yeah, um, and Annie Sharon. Oh Remember my Annie? gosh. Remember Annie? Yeah. Loved Annie. Annie wound up being my assistant for years. And then Annie uh, left and became the uh, manager at the firm. It broke my heart. Oh my, I have not heard that name for Annie Sharon. Annie, if you're listening, wow. I hope you're still around. Oh yeah. man. I could cry right now when I think about oh, it. Oh yeah. Those were the days. But yes, Tyla was always, yep. she had, that's another girl that has, still to this day has amazing ambition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm working with her towards blossoming that ambition. Yeah. Um, because it, it's, uh, it needs to be out there. Yeah. There's no question. And you're going to be right there with us. Well, I'll take you down there. Don't worry. Okay. So, um, all right, so late 80s, early 90s, um, when do you leave the sport house? Actually, back up. You're teaching the aerobics classes. Uh, what was it like for you back in the height of it in the late 80s, teaching aerobics classes um, at the sport house? Um, I mean, the feeling? I, the feeling, because on our side of it, it was, um, I mean, it was literally seeing a rock star. It was no different. Uh-huh. It was literally Saturday morning, 8.30 class, 
It was 70, 80 people. Yeah, it was a total rock and roll show. And you didn't want to miss it. Even if I never took class because it was not happening. And I hung up my spandex. And But we had the catwalk and we had all the above it. And we had all the Stairmaster and the treadmill. Well, the Stairmasters worked better because you can sit up tall and you can see, see everybody. everybody. The yeah. treadmill is the bar was in the way so you couldn't yeah. see everything. So it was a rush to get on the Stairmaster. But if you remember, it was a half hour time limit on the Stairmaster because we only had like five or six. Right. But I would be on that uh, Stairmaster because I just wanted to watch what was going on. And because the energy, I mean, you just wanted to work out. Yeah. It was amazing. So that was on our side. What was it like for you? For, I think it was very competitive at the time, too. Was it? Oh, yeah. Like, With in- instructors? How many people you got okay. in class. Ah. Like, if anybody got more people, you were like, <laughs> how many people are in that class? <laughs> right? So, for a long time, I felt, and I just, just bumping into Tyler just recently again, I said to her, you know, I just have to tell you that, I don't know how you felt, but there were times that I really envied, you know, and you kind of tweaked me a little bit because we were like, how many more people did she have than I had? <laughs> um, you know, uh, having all of those people around you, the energy, the, there, I wish there was footage yep. of back in the day because yep. nobody still, even as we're talking, can't believe has, it. Can't believe it. No. So people on the catwalk are watching you. People in class are following everything that you do. Yep. You can, you, you know, at that time we didn't have, um, uh, microphones, uh, you know, like, uh, the little packs. Now yeah, we had exactly. handheld microphones. Yep. So you had to switch hands so that you weren't lopsided from doing your right arm all the time. Yep. Uh, I sound the way that I do from screaming across the room. <laughs> And I will never, ever forget this. It was Halloween. And I, I, every time I see Tyla, I, and people are in the room, I say this. Tyla got dressed up as a racquetball player. Because <laughs> on one side oh of the God. room was aerobics. Yep. On the outside, it was racquetball court at one time. Correct. The other side was racquetball. Yep. So the music from the aerobics room would reverberate, reviber, yes. whatever, and go into the racquetball court and they were deafened by yep. it. So we would crank the music. <laughs> and so Tyler came in with like, she put like all these like little freckles and goggles and like two buck teeth and she had a racket on one side. And, um, so she came in and it was part of her thing. She was like, she, cause yeah. they hated her and she Absolutely. hated them. And, uh, one guy came in from the racquetball room, opened up the door while Tyler was teaching with a racquetball outfit and pulled the plug on the sound system. Really? Oh yeah. It was blood. Oh, my. It, I mean, it was hysterical. <laughs> so all the, all the aerobics people were like, yep. I'm a racquetball people. It was an absolute sideshow, but it was, it was like cheers. Yeah. Everybody knew everybody. Yeah. Um, you could sit around and talk to people. There was like a little, remember that little, uh, snack shop that oh, was yeah. on, you could have coffee, yep. you could have sandwiches. Yep. I actually did work that one time. Yep. Lisa I, stepmom ran that Deb. Remember Deb? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 She ran that. Wow. It was yep. amazing. Now I'm going to really take you back. Do you remember, uh, the big muffins that would we would get the big chocolate muffins. Oh chocolate yeah, chocolate, cut them, open it like a, a flower, and then she would pour the ice cream in the in, center in of the, it, and we center. would sit there and eat that. It, I know that was the greatest. Oh. I taught when I in my beginning of Sport House, I taught twenty one classes a week, a week. My God, outside of your own exercise, because I know you were crazy. A with week. That. So wow. I would go in in the morning, teach my first class. <laughs> I actually w- worked the pro shop yep. as well yep. in my wet clothes. Yep. Come back, teach at noon, sweat again, go back to the pro shop. I Sometimes I would take a nap there, <laughs> go home for a little bit, or I was actually training at the time yep. there, go back and teach a nighttime class. Go back to the pro. I was never dry. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? Uh-huh. And loved every minute of it. Yes. Yeah. 
that's that's what was so great about it and you know it's it, um it frustrates me in many ways that that's all gone mm-hmm. uh and i don't know if it can come back I, I you know there's been gyms that have attempted to do it um one recently uh do you remember chris stevenson yeah so he had a gym for 16 years and he just closed his gym oh he uh, did yeah up in oak park and uh landlord just crap issues but um he had the closest thing to a um a cheers type setting and these big corporate gyms that are owned by corporate you know it's it's just the bottom line it's the dollar and and that's fine i i still believe that it could be done profitable um but i believe that there's has to be a way or there can be a way or maybe i'm just living in a dream that it can be done the way it was back in the day I I just want to kind of slice into what you were saying, and I won't really mention names right now, but there was a specific gym that I um, just recently worked for. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, uh, you're not allowed to teach more than four classes at any one location. Four. In a week? In a week. That's it? It. What's the purpose behind that? They don't want you to be the star. Right. So if you f- no uh, no I know this is th- this blew my mind. Um so Okay, so I will say this and, and it you know it was and it is Equinox. So <laughs> I was going to say that Now <laughs> now in 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 this part of Southern California where I live there there is um Westlake and there's Encino, mm-hmm. and there is Woodland Hills. Mm-hmm. So you do the fi- get the map out. So if, in order for me, if I wanted to make a you know yeah. a living right. at it, um, I'd have to drive to those three gyms, and can only teach four classes a week. Yeah. On top of that, how do you get a following that way? Right. It's impossible. There's no way. And that's kind of something that you and I were talking about right? before the podcast started is these corporate gyms believe for some reason that their members are theirs. Uh-huh. They are theirs in the terms of paying membership. Right. But they are not theirs. They're, they don't own them in terms of the human connection. The personal trainer, mm-hmm. the aerobics instructor, the cl- group X, however it's worded now, um, instructor, that's who has the connection. Right. And whether they like it or not, if you have a good instructor, excuse me, if you have a good instructor and that instructor has a following of 80 people um, and they leave, they're taken at least half with. Right. Um, and chances are they may join, you know, if they go to another gym, the member will keep a membership at two gyms, right? Uh, but they will follow that instructor. There's no question about it. And this goes back to, I believe that the ones that are running corporate gyms are not gym rats themselves. They no, were never not. gym rats. No, you know, they are good with numbers. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. But until you get your butt in the gym and know what it's like to be there and have that connection with either your trainer or your instructor, They'll never get it. They'll never understand it. I was actually told by one of the um, general managers that when I said, you know, I'm not from here. I'm not from Encino. Mm -hmm. I'm not from Woodland Hills. I've had a huge clientele in Westlake Village. And they, how am I going to build my class? Well, that's up to you. And that's. You know, it, it, Equinox is not about the instructor. It's about the club. Yep. And that's when I thought, wow, yep. you're definitely talking yep. to the wrong person. Because yep. um, let's put it this way. Anybody is allowed to do whatever they want to do. Any member of a gym is allowed to do whatever they want to do. Um I remember when I when I just recently left and I was teaching a spin class and I said uh, I am training at a studio right at the water court. Five minutes it took and I was pulled into an office 
and said, you know, Linda, you can't do that. Yep. And I was like, okay. I, um, I looked this up the other day because I, long story doesn't matter, but do you realize that you and I have been in this industry longer than Equinox has been in business? Yeah. That's crazy when you yeah. think of it that way. Um, I was mentoring a trainer well over 10 years ago and he was at 24 hour fitness. I, I got him in the industry, taught him what to do, go get certified, all that thing, and go to 24 hour, get your experience so he did that, and uh, through my teachings and through his uh, hustle, he was uh, moved really quick up the ladder in terms of clientele, and he was um, training 40 hours a week. He was there for about two, uh, for two years and had the same clientele. He was doing great, clearly making the connection and everything, and he showed up one day, no announcement to him. And he showed up on a Monday, and he, they told, management pulled him in, and said, we took all of your clients and we dispersed them amongst three other trainers. And because you're so good at what you do, we want you to rebuild, rebuild your, your client. clientele you're because you're me. that good. No. And I'm like, and his name's Joe. I said, Joe, that's impossible. They didn't. He's like, Mike, I, I have no clients. I'm, I'm on the schedule for hourly pay, but I now have to hit the floor and rebuild. And I said, no, you're not. We're, n- we're not settling for this. That's insane. I said, you're going to notify. And it had been two years. He had, And back in the day, they had a two-year contract because they had put him through certification. So he had to stay two years. And it was right around that two-year mark. So that they had to know that something was going to happen on his part, mm-hmm. um, that he was going to leave or whatever. So he contacted all of his clients. I told him, I said, you contact every one of your clients and tell them you're, you're moving over to Spectrum. And he says, but I like it here. And I said, no, you're not staying in that. So he moved over to Spectrum. A year later, Spectrum did the same thing to him. Wow. I said, I'd never heard this before. And he said, yep. And so I said, all right, we're taking you in home. And taught him how to build an in-home gym and get all of his clients out. And he left with probably two-thirds of his clients um, left with him. Mm-hmm. And, and the gyms were shocked. Well, 24 was completely shocked because every single... Uh, client went with him to Spectrum without question. So I don't want to get off track yeah. when when we're kind of talking about that, but do you remember George Cassis? Remember the maintenance guy over Oh, at? yeah. Okay. Absolutely. He's still... He, he's still around. He services my equipment in my house. We were talking about this the other day, and um, this, is, this is how it, it kind of comes full circle. The... The people that a gym is a, an entity. It's a it's a square building with metal equipment inside, right? Yep. The people that work there are the people that make the business happen. So, do you remember Karen Voigt? Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. I worked. With- <laughs> we went. Uh, Tyler mentioned her name. I haven't heard that name in a long time, but oh yeah. Okay, so I worked for Karen as okay. well yep. when she was still married to Henry. Okay, that's another. <laughs> well, they're not married anymore, but love Karen. Um, she had the Karen uh, Voigt Fitness and Dance Center uh, mm-hmm. off of uh, La Cienega. Yep. I took class there. Wound up teaching for her as well. And she had, I don't know whether you remember Kaiser yeah. uh, Hydro Fitness. Yeah, loved it. So she had five studios, right, in her building going all day long, packed, wow. packed to the hilt. And she had this Hydro Fitness equipment. Yep. I have to talk to you about that. Anyway, so it was a circuit and the room could not be. I don't know how big this room is right now, and this is a pretty good sized room for a gym, full of Hydro Fitness, packed with people, no air conditioning, in the summer in West Hollywood. Wow. The windows steam. in that building steam. You were like, you were on the verge of heat stroke. Yep. That place packed in that many people because it was hardcore. Yep. No, no bull. Yep. And the more people that went to that place, 
the more there were lines yep. because of the teachers. Yep. The teachers exactly. ruled. Yeah. And, you know, it's. Um, I would love to do that again in a minute. Oh, absolutely. The. And that's what I don't think is being taught in the. Um, in any of the certifications today, I don't know about aerobics, okay, but in terms of the personal training, there is nothing being taught about individ- individuality. Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, everybody comes out the same. The same. They all understand the same thing, which is great. Okay? They that, all that, say the same yeah, thing. That, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But when I went through NASM, we actually had a segment in there called interpersonal skills. And one of my mentors, Jack Mogan, was the one that taught that. Mm. And I got to co-teach, co-teach with him one year in that. NASM pulled that out. And when they pulled it out, I was very good friends with Neil Spruce, who owned it at the time. And it got pulled out because they felt that there was so much more information they needed to give mm-hmm. that this was something that wasn't needed. And I said, no, 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 no. That's one of the most important things. Right. Is it taught them how to dress. It taught them how to be on time, how to get a waiver. It taught them the business side, uh, the legality side. It taught them how to virtually how to think Mm -hmm. uh, like a trainer. And so, okay, you have all this information and come Monday, you're going to go train clients. Well, that's kind of scary, but we're going to walk you through this. And we would role play of walking into a club and walking up to a complete stranger and saying, you know, hey, I just was at a, at a course. And, you know, I, I learned something really cool. Trainers today have no idea. They have no idea what to do. And so I see some amazing trainers. Um, I mean, I, I don't frequent the gyms anymore, but back in the day when I would go in and just want to get a workout in, I'd sit in the back of the room and just kind of observe the floor. Mm-hmm. And I see some great trainers. Mm-hmm. And realizing they've been in it maybe 10 years and they still haven't developed the skills that I think can be taught. Right. And it blows my mind that none of these certifications, and I've talked about it for a long time, that none of these certifications bring this back. And that's something that Tyler and I were talking about. And I think it's something that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Um, And we can start with the three of us. And it literally is great. You have the knowledge. Now let's teach you how to be successful. So going back into individuality, this is one thing that I feel that when you're in a corporate environment, and I can't remember the name of the guy that started this, this is uh, when, and I'm talking from an instructor's Mm -hmm. standpoint so that maybe we can both, because I I, I am a trainer as well. Yeah, right. Uh, When you have to teach choreography that is um, pre-thought out for you. Mm -hmm. There's a a number of classes at Equinox that are that way now, where you as the instructor have, you go to a workshop and the choreography is written down for you and the music is written down for you and you have to go home and memorize that and teach that in class. The first time I did it, I did it, I went through, and then you have to do these teach back things, right? Where you stand in front of a room of other instructors and you teach it back so that they can decide whether you're capable of teaching that class. (laughs) Blew my mind. So, wow. Yeah. So they teach, like, I have a first degree in Korean American Tung Sudo. So I, that's, that's another yep. avenue. I went through the martial arts thing. And even with that, I had to learn their choreography beat by beat to the music that I really didn't like, that yep. was not like me. Went in front of the teach back thing, never was offered the class. Three or four workshops, jump rope. Right? Jump rope. Jump rope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I finally taught that class. It had to be taught, not necessarily to specific music, but uh, a specific format. When you start doing that to a person like me, it's like I'm Italian. I use my hands all the time. It's like there's parts of you that have been cut off. 
And there yeah. is a specific guy. I can't remember his name because I kind of went out when he was in um, that 24 hour fitness, LA workout, right. all of that. That guy has developed a system that you, all the instructors, do not have their, they do not do their own choreography anymore. This is a mandated format that you have to teach. Four workshops that I went into that I finally decided I'm not doing the teach oh back gosh. because I'm never going to get the class anyway. Right. So why bother? And being that you only teach four classes oh at a facility oh. anyway, where do you go with that? And a number one, I became a certification specialist for AFA. I flew all over Europe doing workshops, mm -hmm. training instructors. And I'm at this corporate entity, and they're telling me I have to do their choreography. Never got any classes. I, I mean, uh, this particular, I worked for Billy Blanks when he was like out the door. Yep. Karen Voigt, Candace Copeland. And now I'm in a corporate environment where I can only do <laughs> what they tell me to do. Oh my God. Blew my mind. See, this is where. I would like that footage of the 70, 80, 90, 100 people in a class. Right. And go to the head guy right. that's doing all these and say, when's the last time you had a class this big? And, because he probably never did. I'm trying to think of the guy's name. It's kind of like, um, uh, oh, I'll come back to it. It'll come to me. And... And not only did you have that at the sport house, but you could have said, I'm teaching in Malibu on the sand. Mm -hmm. They'd all be there. I'll be there. I'm going to be in a park um, in Santa Clarita. What time? I'll be there. I'll be there. Right. So, and then to take, oh my gosh, they take that person, that instructor and say, now you have to do it our way because we know what's the best way. This like, is the best part. Karen Voigt, the creator, yeah. right? I would say that Candace Copeland and, and Karen Voigt were both around the same time, around the same area. That was a competitive thing as well. Um, you take someone like Karen Voigt, and they put her in that situation where she, as the main person, had to adapt and stand in front of people and teach. That's, to me... And uh, uh, here's how I feel about y you. It takes you such a long time to build up your confidence right. and to <clears throat> develop your following. Yep. And also, uh, like I said, the reason that I really have always respected you is because I think people that go and seek knowledge, that's something that gives you longevity mm -hmm. more than, you know, I'm a, I'm an athlete, I'm a gymnast, I'm right. a dancer. I was like, I'm none of that. <laughs> right. But Same. I learned and I learned from some of the best people in the industry. And when you uh, make that person, you take them off that, they, they earn the right to have the pedestal. Yep. And you take them back no and way. you put them in front of people and make them feel like they're less than they are. I, that's, to me, that, that is a slap in the face. To come, it's so disrespectful. It is very disrespectful. And oh my God, I'm blown away. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's worse than I thought. Yeah, it is. Yes. Good question. Michelle was asking, when did that shift happen from being your own person, being your own instructor, doing your own choreography, do, coming up with your own music? When did that shift happen to corporate America? Um. You mean the, around the time, yeah. the time frame? Well, oh yeah, yeah. It. Um, his name is Thomas the Promise. That's the guy that I think is the guy that started the choreography thing. Thomas the Promise. Yeah, he was the guy that came into the industry. So, like, I'm going to come up. To, I'm going to answer that in a second. Every uh, instructor would go to, every year, the big um, uh, convention, uh, convention yeah. thank yeah. you, yeah. in San Diego. Yeah. And everybody would, who was anybody. Was that idea? 
that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's still going on. Um, now, now it used to cost three hundred dollars. Now it costs like three thousand yeah, dollars. Crazy. Yeah, that's inflation for you. <laughs> anyway, um, so he was the one that started this. Uh, we're going to take all of these corporate America places and put my system into place. So LA Fitness actually is one of them. 24-hour fitness is one of them. And they started implementing it into Equinox as well. Now, I don't know if Spectrum started that, but I would say probably... When those corporate gyms came in, that's when it started to happen. I can't give you a specific date. And you think about it, what that, what he has done, that one individual and what corporate has done. I bet you he makes a lot of money. I'm sure. But what they did is anybody can become an instructor. Right. Because all you're doing is following a book. Right. And it's interesting. Um my daughter Savannah, um, um, she wanted. Um, she's got a whole career in finance, but she loves uh, core power yoga, and she wanted and she loves sculpt in particular. So she decided just for shits and giggles, she's going to become a sculpt instructor. And I'm like, that's awesome. When are you going to do it? I mean, and she's like, even if I do one class a week, I teach because she just loves doing it and something that she can always do. I'm like, all right, great. So she was taking the classes and she would say, can I train you? I said, sure. So she'd come here and Lisa, train Lisa and I. And her cueing, she, reading out of a book right. of, this, of the cueing. And I'm like, I, I would never say it that way. She says, Dad, but it's specific. It has to be done this way. I'm like, okay, but I don't know. I mean, if that does that work for you? And she says, well, but it's their way. That's what I have to do. And I'm like. And so now looking back at what you're saying is realizing that's what she was falling into. Right. Um, and she ultimately did not um, continue down that path. But it was mind-blowing to sit and look at the book of you couldn't have – it couldn't be too wordy. Right. Um, it, it had – you had to shorten up that that verbiage of – and I'm like, but – if you take out this word, that's an important word, and I don't know where you're going to take out these words to shorten it up, to fit it in, to not have to repeat yourself, and none of this makes sense anyways. Right. Uh, but that's really what they were doing was just creating – they create the instructors. Yeah, remember that movie, The Stepford Wives? Yes. Okay, so that's, I, I that's how I started to feel. Yep. Like, oh, my God, what is happening? You know, there's an interesting – you know, talk, speaking about creativity and taking that away from somebody, there was a time in my life that if I thought something, wow, wow, I want to do that to the class, I would go to management and say, can we do this? And they'd go, sure. When do you want to do it? Yep. You know, I remember when I was in Bally's in Hollywood, right? Their trainers, their teachers, I remember when I... I the first day, right? And I'm thinking to myself, okay, Linda, don't, Linda, don't fire everybody. <laughs> I'm going to be good. I'm going to watch. And uh, I, there, were, there were teachers that were in the, teach, the, the room tying their shoes 15 minutes waiting for people to show up in right. the room before they would, te- would teach. They're getting – right, right. Okay, so I'm like, mm, I'm sw- swallowing. Right. That's fine. Sorry, I just – my Italian hand hit the microphone. Um, and I thought, wow, wow, why is this happening? You know why? Because there, there were times that you would have, like, Linda Shelton's come in. Uh, you would have um, the Candace Copeland's come into the gym and train teachers to be great teachers. Yep. Well, now these big corporations don't want to pay anybody. So what they do is they throw you out there. You're supposed to become like this great person with their format. You read it every day. You walk into class and you act like a robot and that's how you do it. So I came in and, um, I said, I want to change your, um, cycling room. 
I want to take all the bikes out and put it in the main studio in the back. And I want to take all of your boxing bags and put them in the spin room. Amazing. Am- amazing amount of people walk in because it was isolated. It was right. a boxing room. Yep. Um, I decided to do group training. So if people didn't want to spend a lot of money, right. well, I was taking four people in at a time yep. and training them at one time. Right. Well, do you know that they started darking on my program? Well, you can't do that. Um, why aren't any of the other trainers doing it? Um, because they're shit <laughs> and you won't let me train them. Exactly. Because I'm not the training uh, yep. Uh, the personal training manager. Because corporate hasn't written the book to train them the way you have done Mm -hmm. successfully. Mm -hmm. And therefore corporate looks at it and says, well, we're going to, instead of having you, Linda, teach the rest of these trainers how to do this, we're going to shut you down. Right. Because it's a lot easier. And that's what they do to a lot of teachers. In, and I'll just say one more thing, in the Bally's in Hollywood, they had 50 treadmills 50 well i had taken the workshop for urban trekking from uh oh god he's gonna kill me right now i'll come back to that i decided that we were gonna close the cardio room for 30 minutes which is not prime time but close to prime time and i did urban trekking to 50 people on 50 treadmills with a little boombox microphone yep. and successful. Why can't people, why doesn't corporate America have right. that vision? Because it's the same thing with sports. Um, it's all about the money. Yep. And it can't, it can be. That's the thing that they don't understand. Right. Is, and this is because they didn't think of it. Right is if they let somebody like yourself, Tyla, Candace Copeland, Karen Voigt, let them free right. to, to run the place, right. what they don't understand is that they will, they'll have so many more members. Mm-hmm. They will keep their membership. Mm-hmm. Um, their members will bring in more people because it becomes a rock star. It becomes a rock show. Mm-hmm. And, but they have to accept the fact that they're going to have to pay for this information. Right. To pay somebody like yourself to come in and, and revamp the situation and make them so different. Because if you think about it, so if all these instructors are being taught how to think, what to say, what to uh, music and all that, now there is no difference between Crunch Fitness, 24 hour, Equinox, they're all the same. Work for Crunch too. Um, so the only thing that's different is the pricing. Right. Uh, the equipment virtually can be the same. Mm-hmm. So there is no, they're just a bunch of box gyms. So going back to all these gyms, right? The, uh, even with Billy Blanks, I, I, there's no, if you are a seasoned trainer, teacher, mm-hmm. there's nowhere else to go. You can't, unless you hoard, right? Right. So I'll give you an example. Um, in my experience with Equinox, there are instructors that if the members don't go to their class, they drill them. Why aren't you there? Why? You need to come to my, you need to come to my class. You need to come to blah, 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 Really? I'm like this. Go take other people's classes. Right. That's the best way for you to yep. get the best workout. You get an all around. You get to experience all of that. Yep. I have never, ever been in that kind of competitive environment. That creates animosity between yep. people. When, when you know, let's say, for example, you're put in that mold and you can't do what you as an individual would really want to do. Right. Um, like I've heard some, some people say to me, Linda, forget the talking. Get in there and kill them. They'll love you. Well, you're hiring the wrong girl. Exactly. That's not what I do. <laughs> exactly. So um, that's that's where the industry is now. Right. And we'll talk about millennials because I have a 37-year-old son who 
hated the fact that his mother was always really fit. He wanted a fat Italian mom <laughs> that, in fact, when any pictures of me in my house or, you know, in a bathing suit, he would always call me and say, where are you? What are you wearing? And when all my pictures were turned around in the, in the, in the house so that nobody ever saw what I looked like. But, um, you know, these are the things right now that the younger people right. are getting such a disservice yep. because it should be all about the love and it's all, it's not. Yep. Uh, how do you get fit? Getting somebody to go, come here. Yep. Come with me for a minute. Exactly. I'm going to show you this. I'm not charging you. Right. I'm not charging you right now. I'm just yep. giving you some little, some input. Come over here, work out with me for a little bit. That's right. Nobody wants to do it anymore. Yep. Because it's like, you know, when, when younger people come in, and I love being around younger people, when they come in and they say, you know what, especially in this element that we live in, in Westlake Village, which is like, I always call it a mini Beverly Hills. Yeah. Um, everybody's around a lot of money. Well, working smart and not hard, yes, everybody wants to do that. But working hard yep. and smart yep. is going to give you the opportunity to step back away. And when those other younger people come in in your business because you were the millennial that put the time in and now you've got this great company, well, now you're going to appreciate where you came from. That's right. Because there's nothing better that er than earning Mommy and daddy giving you is one thing, and it's great if that you have the opportunity, but working with that right. and making it something that is your own, nobody can take that away from you. Exactly. And, and so everyone in our age bracket will agree with you on that. And it's fascinating when you think about it this way. So here we are as parents trying to teach that. And so that child goes to a corporate gym to become a trainer and everything is handed to them. Right. Exactly. So it completely discredits everything we just said at home. Right. Life is not going to be handed to you. You're not going to be told what to do. You're going to have to figure this out on your own. Right. And they say, Mom, I just got a job at uh, Equinox and it's great. They tell me how to think, what to say, what to do. All I do is show up. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh my gosh. I mean, you're just spinning your wheels. Right. Because what they don't realize is they can't leave. Right. You know, I mean, they are, they're stuck there. Exactly. Um, do you think it could ever change? I do. Okay. I mean, you know, I, I just sit here and this is the stuff that I get extremely passionate about um i've said it many many times on this podcast i've said to people in general um i've been fortunate enough to be in this industry for 32 years i've never worked a day in my life and i truly feel that mm -hmm. um i i mean i sit here and listen to you i i, I listen to tyla and i know there's gonna be a few more coming on um, and, and I almost get the starting a revolution feeling mm -hmm. and I think back, um, I think back to oddly enough, um, the sport house days mm -hmm. in that this is when Vita and Roger owned and love them. Oh, Still talk to Vita. Do you? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen, uh, Roger moved. Roger moved. Yeah. Um, I know they moved away. Vita, I haven't seen in years. Uh, last time he was uh, running Golds in, in Thousand Oaks, and I ran into him. He's doing real estate right now. Is he really? Yeah. Okay. I got to so reach out. So I just out talked to him. to him two weeks ago. He's one I have to have on here. Oh. Because, yeah. again, the, this is what I I'm, love Vita. This is where my thoughts are going. So I remember back in the Sport House days, um, we had. Um, I, I was gone for a number of years. Uh, I left the, um, the gyms around 92 and just went in home. And then right around 95, Lisa, um, wanted to start working out in a gym. She's like, I, I need to be around people that sweat mm -hmm. and just that camaraderie. I'm like, okay. So we joined the sport house again. And 
I was there for maybe two weeks. And, I, you know, I admit that I, I drank the Kool-Aid of NASM harder mm-hmm. than anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, it was a cult. And there, I'm the first to admit it. And it was their way or the highway. And I, I bit hard. And I remember going into Vita and Roger's office and I said, um, if you don't make some changes with the trainers here, you're not going to own this place. Someone is going to get hurt. Someone's going to sue you and it's no longer your gym. Uh, what do you recommend? I said, everyone should be, everyone should have the same knowledge. They could teach the way they want right. and say it the way they want, but they should be, they, they can't sit here and, and say myths and that they're just not true. Mm-hmm. Um, a bench press is not the ultimate way to build a big chest. Right. I mean, it's just physics. Right. So he sent everybody to NASM. And we all came back on Monday. And most of the trainers went back to teaching the exact same way they had been teaching. Exactly. Like, and, and and I sat there and I'm like, what? I don't understand this. And we had a trainer meeting. And they basically said, we want to teach the way we teach. I'm like, you can say and and express it and and be your individual self. We're not telling you how to say it, right? But this is the information. This is the human body we're talking about, right? Um, and just couldn't get anywhere with the trainers. So finally, I said, okay, well, if we can't get anywhere with the trainers, then we start a mini revolution. And I told Vida, I said, I want to start teaching classes for free to the members Monday night at five thirty in the gym. He's like, are you nuts? That's our busiest time. And I said, I know. And I said, we're going to take body part by body part. And we're going to explain this is what this machine does. This is what this one does. No, if you hold your hands out wider on a bar, it does not make it. All the myths that were being generated because it was physics. Right. I said, so we're going to get the members asking their trainers, wait, he's saying this. Why are we doing this? I said, because this is the stuff that these trainers were hearing. Right. And again, I could care less how they said it. Right. But it should be the same information. That backfired. Um, <laughs> it was great for the members. The members loved it. The trainers like, what are you doing? Right. And uh, it was right around 96, and I had it out with a trainer. Um, I was a horrible manager. God, I was terrible. Um, it was Monday night, 6 o'clock, <laughs> front desk, and a trainer that had not been training as long as I am. He was older than me. Um, and he came from corporate, um, business and hated corporate. So he wanted to become a trainer to have the love and the freedom and and all these things. And, um, I can still remember it, him arguing with me about something. And I just ended it with, that's why you work for me. And I, as it was coming out of my mouth, I'm like, oh my God, that was horrible. And he just looked at me. And he went his way. I went right into Vita and Roger's office. I said, I suck at this. I quit. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, look, I just said something I shouldn't have said. I know better. Mm -hmm. I'm not made for this. And Roger says, we'll send you to management school. I said, dude, that's not going to do anything for me. I'm not the right person. I'm out. And I quit that day. Wow. And he said, no, we need, I said, no. I said, trust me, when when you hear his side, I'm going to tell you what he's going to tell you because I'm listening to what I said. Maybe it was a little worse, but I'm, here's what it is. And I said, you're going to fire me. So I'm quitting. Don't even fire me. I don't even want that on my record that I was fired. Right. And they're laughing and this and that. And the next day um, I went in just to work out because I said, no, I'm done. And Vita said, you're serious. I said, I told you I quit. He's like, well, he did come in and he's like, it's probably a good thing. I said, I told you. (laughs) And management's tough. Oh, I mean, you, you have, I'm not a good delegator. Wow. Cause I don't think anybody could do it better than I Exactly. Exactly. But this is where I think people can benefit from you is, is hearing what worked, how you did, what you built, how long it took. It's not an overnight success. It's putting your love and heart and soul into it. Um, It's learning how to think for yourself. It's something that nobody can ever take away from you. So Mm -hmm. yes, corporate can tell you how to do a class, but I guarantee you, 
if we were to put flyers up on cars at the Westlake Promenade that Linda Weiler, bring back the name, Linda Weiler, Tyler Patterson, Linda Shelton are going to be teaching an 80s aerobics class Mm -hmm. um, at Caneo Park on Saturday morning. 20 bucks a class. It will be packed. Absolutely packed. Mm -hmm. Then I would go around and invite all the managers to all the local clubs and say, you want to see how a class is done? And you want to see a following? They, these people have not heard these names in years. They will come out. Of, it, it wouldn't, you wouldn't even need a month to promote it. Right. It would be unbelievable. And then the instructors would look at this going, I don't get it. Right. What the hell is this? I've never seen this. Never seen this many people. The energy is coming out of their skin. Um, like, I want to be a part of this. How do I do this? Because they're not teaching me. They're, I'm reading out of a book, left, left, right, 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 left. Um, so I, be, I truly believe that um, something has to happen, something should happen mm-hmm. in a um, teaching workshop, teaching seminars of, from the aerobic side, from group. It doesn't even have to be aerobics. How do you teach more than three people? Like, I mean, I'm a one-on-one trainer. Right. I have a hard time teaching two people. Mm-hmm. You know, how you can go in and teach 50 people to move to the left is mm-hmm. mind-blowing to me. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. mind-blowing. And and there, it's really funny. A, a friend of mine, do you know the name Dave Gilbertson? Mm-hmm. So Dave owns um, Three Elements, um, which was Monkey Bar Gym. And he's good friends with Kevin Lewis. And Kevin taught at NASM back in 92. That's when I met Kevin. Wow. And um, I was doing some consulting for Dave, working with his trainers, teaching them the business of one-on-one training because they, all they were doing is group. And I had said, when it's downtime, they should be doing one-on-one training. And they're like, we know how to talk to a group. We don't even know what to say to one person. I'm like, okay, that's way easier than teaching a group. Right. So I was in there on a Saturday morning. And I'm working with uh, this girl, Kelly. And all of a sudden, I hear this huge voice. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And, and I look around the wall, and it's Dave teaching. And he, it, it, he just came alive, a whole different person. And I just sat there, and I watched. I was supposed to be working with Kelly, and I'm like, I, I'm sorry. I have to watch this. And I was blown away. And we get done. He gets done with his class. I said, what the hell was that? You say, oh, yeah, I, I, you know, that's my true passion. I can do it with my eyes closed. I said, dude, that's a talent. Mm-hmm. That's unbelievable. I yeah, said, how many could you teach? He's like, I've taught 200. I said, you've taught 200 people choreography of different things. Yeah, you know, some are doing this, some are doing this, some are doing this. So, so instead of everyone doing the same thing, like an old aerobics class, he's doing 200 people in a circuit, all different circuits with very little equipment. I said, dude, that's a talent. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to teach that. You need to do this. Right. And so I think... That's like super multitasking. It's unbelievable to be able to have that that in you to be able to do. So I still believe that um, some fitness revolution needs to get started. You know, this this is so interesting because I've had... When I was talking to George, and he came up to my place and serviced my equipment, he was telling me, unfortunately, as for him, like when he services equipment at gyms, mm-hmm. he's like, you, I can't get the parts anymore. I can't. He's like, you would. He's actually working for an air conditioning company because they, he has a better ability wow. of having more work that right. way. Um. So with that being said, um. What's interesting is when I worked for Candace Copeland, Mm -hmm. um, she had workshops, but her workshops were more about how you as an individual can create your own choreography. Okay, so did that. Um, 
she gave me an opportunity. Well, I did what I thought I mm-hmm. needed to do. She gave me an opportunity to take over a class of this guy that was like a, an ex ballerina. Right. And she's like, okay, I, I'm going to try in this class. It his class was like in a little studio, like 30 people. I wound up with five and she let me go and she let me go and never said a thing to me. And I'm thinking this woman is going to fire me. Right. And I remember I was so uncomfortable in my own skin. I walked into her office and she said, so what's up? And I said, I'm a nightmare. I can't do it. Blah, blah, blah. And she said, you know, no, it's all there. You need to go home and write down what you want to do. Get organized. It's all there, Lynn. Yep. Take time off. I took three months off and I worked on my choreography till I had it down. I was able to talk and laugh and da. Yep. And I went back in and it went from five people to 25 people. My point is she had the confidence in me. She didn't say, out. Yep. I'm getting somebody else in. This is how they work it now. They, they take every part of you, that, that raw talent, and if you don't make it in two days, right. well, they'll bring somebody else in. And they'll bring somebody else in that they don't have to pay that much money exactly. in, too, because that's exactly. going to save them money in the, yep. in the meantime. Yep. I have this vision uh, like the one thing that I will give Equinox credit to is that they do teach. However, the reason, and I'm not, not saying this, you know, I love you in most gyms. And I've been a personal training manager. They will give a lot more money to the personal training department because that generates money. Right. They don't have to pay you. They don't have payroll like they do in yep. the, the, group fitness right department but what they started to do was bring in more of the personal training element into classes and i go back into that kaiser hydra fit Mm -hmm. that feeling when i used to teach that class is every guy wants to take it every girl wants to take it everybody wants to be in it and sweat and feel like I, there's something about that, that I think right. a really good group of instructors in not a huge facility, if let's just say we all got together and did that again, a place where you can get everything all in one shot yep. and then some, you don't have to have 50 million pieces of equipment. Right. You can do all the same thing. I remember... There was in, in the Hydra Fitness and the Kaiser, there was a, um, a Hydra Fit bench press. Yep. The instructors would get on top of the arm and p- <laughs> exactly. push you up, push that equipment yep. up with you on the top of it. It was insane. It was crazy. And like I said, yep. no air conditioning, right. just a fan yep. that, the, that the, garbage, um, the garbage area was like right in between that building would come up through the air vents oh my and people would still be yep. and, and piles of people waiting to get in there. Yes, you can change the system because I don't think the system the way it is, is going to last. I agree with you. I don't. Yep. Totally agree with you. I think it's a flash in the pan. Yep. And it's what's crazy is that how many gyms have opened up in this area, um, from, uh, Newbury park to Agora, mm-hmm. there are 72 locations to choose from. That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. And How people have three and four memberships to yep. different places. I'm like, dude, give me the money. <laughs> right. I'll do it for you. Exactly. Um, you know, the, the focus, I think, for you're a parent, you're mm-hmm. in the fitness business. The fitness industry is not going anywhere. But the how-to has definitely has to change. Mm-hmm. And I think that the mom and pop 
if you want to call it that. Yep. That place, like when Vita and Roger had the sport house, when, and I'll be honest, when Spectrum opened, I knew it was over for me. Yep. I they Vita and Roger took care of me, and I think he, they took care of a lot of the people that worked there at their expense to a certain degree. Totally agree. Um, and Vita, because Vita taught, he had uh, he understood what we were going through, and there are you know the front desk people. Hey, how you doing? What are you doing? How's the kids? What what are you, yeah. where, where are you guys going later on? You know, pay the front desk person. That's your bread and butter right exactly there. That's right. that's what your facility, your, it's what, what it's all about. Pay those people. Do you remember a name, Thomas Plummer? Yeah. Thomas Plummer, I was at a seminar 25 years ago, and he had said that the most important person in that building is your front desk staff. Always. And why are they paid minimum wage? And why do they put people that don't know anything about it? Yep. Right, exactly. Back Stupid. in the day, they would, you know, before there was the internet, they would call up and, you know, hey, can you tell me about your club? How do I get to your club? Um, yeah, I don't know how, I, I just get here on my bicycle. Um, like, what the hell are you doing? And then when a new member walks in, you know, the front desk is, that's the first person they see. Pay them. Yeah. Why are they not being paid? The other thing is, like, I don't want to be on a robot on a phone. Right. Right. Can't you just answer the phone? I just want to answer and talk to somebody. <laughs> I want exactly. a human being on the other end. Yeah. I mean, these well, and are... that's what's crazy. It's you walk into a gym. It's a personal contact, can, human connection environment. Right. Why are there? Why are they putting on the robocall? Yeah. System that makes no sense to me. It's beyond me. Yeah. Going into, like really briefly, going into when I started taking martial arts, mm -hmm. there's a, a very, very important person, um, and because I'm Korean American Tung Sido, uh, Tom Bloom was like the big guy. Oh, yeah. And to me, he still is. Yeah. He put together a um, group of kids, um, like a, um, a demo team, mm -hmm. that when I watched them, like... I wanted to to right. be a martial artist. Yeah. Like these kids were freaking amazing, and uh, I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from the people from Billy Blanks, Garrett Warren, yep. um, all of those people. Who right now, Garrett Warren is a stunt coordinator and has worked on every movie that, uh, like Avatar, wow. uh, James Cameron. Yep. He walked right into it. People don't understand that fitness people can be anybody. Yeah. You can do anything. Yep. If people are bringing you down and tying you down, you need to not yep. be there because especially if you're young and creative and you've got a future ahead of you, be all that you can be. Exactly. You know, be. So I put a challenge out to anyone listening, um, somebody that is willing to... Um, I mean, on the simplest platform, somebody that is willing to give up an aerobics room, uh, large room, we need a large room, uh, give up a room for a Saturday morning, give an, enough notice, and we will get the instructors and get the word out, and, it, and you will see what a true class is all about. And... And start from there to the next thing of somebody that is listening and wants to provide the four walls. And we put the, uh, the trainers, the instructors, and in, in teach the way the industry should go. Be awesome. It, it would be, be un there. unbelievable. And, and, I mean, with your connections on the group classes of instructors, um, the trainers that I know, it would be an unbelievable rock show. I agree. They, they yeah. would have no idea what hit them. And that's, I, I think that's where something like that needs to happen. The other thing I said, and I mentioned to Tyla about doing, is uh, literally doing a teaching workshop mm -hmm. uh, for trainers that, okay, I have the knowledge. I am a trainer, but I have no idea how to take this to the next level. I have no idea how to make a career out of this. Um, I don't want to be told corporate what to do. Uh, I want to learn how to think for myself. How do I get clients? All those things. Um, 
it's what I've been doing on a small one-on-one scale. Mm-hmm. And I've been pushed by others um, to make it uh, a much bigger business. Uh, but I would need help in doing that. And that's where I look to you and Tyla and a few others that I look at fitness gods. Uh, that These are my fitness gods. Um, that, look, you want to know how it was done? This is how it was done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're not, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You, you got to learn how, it, how it rolls. Right. Exactly. And, um, these are the ones that did it and did it the right way. And it was hard. It was hard work for them, but you'll learn from them and the mistakes that they made because they're willing to share with you, but they'll also teach you why it was successful. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So. We can go on and on for hours. I'm going to I wrap know. this up here. Okay, okay. Um, just a few questions that are uh, I find to be fun. And uh, let's see. Um, what's a perfect day for you? A perfect day? Perfect day. You wake up. How would you like to spend your day? You get to do anything you want. Oh, boy. That's a, that's a toughie. Right? Uh, perfect day. You know, I was just talking about getting into real estate. So, mm-hmm. like, this is like, that's another whole, you know, you go from knowing everything you need to know about fitness into something that you know jack crap about. <laughs> you know that you like it. Right. Um, I'm a beach person. Okay. I have always been a beach person. Okay. I, uh, when I lived in New Jersey, I lived in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, which is right near, um, uh, Seaside Heights, okay. where all wow. the Seaside Heights, yeah. uh, the housewives of yep. the Jersey Shore, um, I would get up in the morning. The first thing that I would do, I was three blocks from the beach, get on the beach, run, do my five miles, come back. There was a little coffee shop right there. I would get a piece of crumb cake and a cup of coffee, and I would sit out looking over the water, yep. watching the seagulls, think to myself, damn, this, this is, is it. This is it. This is it. This yep. is life. That's it for me. Beautiful. That's a perfect day. I love it. Love it. Um, what's your favorite color? Red. Favorite sound? Favorite sound? Ah! <laughs> My favorite sound... Mm. I don't know, like maybe Oh, that's a really hard one. Mhm. Least favorite sound. The alarm clock. There you go. Favorite food. My favorite food shrimp. Favorite music. Oh, God. You're asking a musician. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no more rock and roll. You know that, right? right? Um, I like everything. Okay. I like, I even like, um, um, What's your... like, like island music, you know? Okay. What's your go-to radio station? Turn the car on, you know it's going to be what you want. Oh, boy. But I, you know, like, and now I'm like into political stuff, too. Like, uh, you mean music? Music, that, yeah. Um... I still listen to one hundred two point seven. Okay, I'll 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 even bend at listening to the wave every now and then, but uh, maybe ninety point something. I don't know. Mine's, it's hard to say. Mine's classic rock. Is it classic oh, yeah. rock? Oh yeah, I'm I think I'm stuck in. The There's 80s. no more classic rock. Well, satellite radio. Oh yeah, uh, classic uh, rewind and classic like radio. Howard Stern satellite radio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Love I mean, Howard Stern. Yeah. You know, I always said that I was a Howard Stern of the, the fitness industry. That is so true. I am. That is so amazing. I, I, I actually wow. go into class like that. And people used to say to me, Linda, that's so rude. You're wearing your sunglasses. I'm like, no, it's an element, man. It's my do. <laughs> Which brings right? me to my next word, favorite curse word. Let it fly. Got to pick the one, F-bomb. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, least, least favorite word. You know, well, that's two words, but yeah, that's all right. Who would you like to have dinner with, dead or alive? <laughs> dead or alive. 
probably Linda Rodstadt. Nice. Yeah. I just always loved her music. That's cool. I was going to say Joni Mitchell. She's still, she's still around. I actually just went to her, um, her birthday thing. Really? Yeah. But she wasn't there. She's not well. Oh, really? Mm. Oh. I don't know. She's older than me. Somebody's got to be older than me. <laughs> what do you want to be known for? What's on your tombstone? One more time. Oh, that's so perfect. That's That would be me. Exactly. One more time, which was usually five more times. Because everyone is dead in class, and there she is. Little One more time! Freaking bunny rabbit, going and going and going. Freaking take out the batteries. You know, just really quick before we wrap yeah. this up, a lot of people, I've, like, I don't know if any of you have ever gone to, like, personal counseling in your life. Oh, like, yeah. Italian people have to. We're, yeah. like, we're, like, wound way too tight. But, um, you know, when you know that you have an hour and oh. like the alarm goes off, you're like, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> I am like, can I just say one more thing? Uh, like in my whole career, I don't think, um, I've ever ended on the dime. No. Just like if I wasn't finished doing something with somebody, I'd spend the extra time right. because I just felt that yep. it was part of who, what I delivered. Yeah. And, um. You know, I, I'm really excited. At first, when I, you know, we contacted through social media, yeah. which, by the way, I have just started at <laughs> sixty something years old, and uh, and um, I don't even know how to do it, but I'm trying right now, and that's how we connected. Right. And I thought, I know how successful you are and have been, and I know the amount of time that you put into it. And uh, I feel that whatever you decided to do, if you wanted to do something and include me in it, I would be honored to do it. I really would. And um, for all the other people that Tyla and uh, uh, the Linda Shelton, um, I've had the best career that anybody could ever imagine. And even though people think of me in such a high regard, I never, ever thought that I was right. ever good enough. And I never, ever had an ego that way. I always felt that even to this day, you know, we were talking about the big conventions and how expensive they've become. And I feel, do I want to go and just take a class from somebody? I don't even know who they are anymore. If you had a good a person that would teach physiology, kinesiology, yes, mm -hmm. I would go and take that in a heartbeat. Yeah, especially if I had high regard for them. But um, you know, anybody that is coming into the fitness industry, the other thing that I think about. Oh, that's what I can I just say one more thing. Keep going. See, here's Absolutely. on my great my tombstone one more time. I when I lived in Hollywood, I actually went to um, <clears throat> I worked for. Um, oh, what is the company that does all those famous movies? Um, oh, I just had a, like a brain dead, um, DreamWorks. Yes. So the woman who was the head of human resources, I would go to her house every morning before work. And I remember walking into her house at six o'clock in the morning and she was already on her email with two children babies. Yep. And she said, come to DreamWorks and teach a, a class for people that sit all day. Oh my gosh. And I swear to God, no word of a lie. And I brought in paper towel rolls and I did this spreadsheet on what you can do while you're at work and you can't get to the gym. And I remember sitting in this big round table and telling them to, for inner thigh work, to put a paper towel roll in between their legs and get up out of the chair yep. so you could work on your glutes, your hamstrings, and your inner thigh at the same time. And there was a girl that I met that said something about um, her thought was that we should open a, um, a union. Hmm. Keep that in the back of your mind. For instructors and have a facility where anybody that wants to learn practical application could come in and you could be 
the company that sends people out to different jobs. And you can hire the cream of the crop. And I still think that there's something wow. to be said about that. So put that in your cigar and smoke wow. that. Wow. Ooh, nice. I let that out of the bag. Oh, wow. That's huge. Yeah. That's. Uh... I think we need to work on that. And just remember, this is Linda Weiler and Mike Pincus talking about it. So don't get any wise, any wise ideas. Right. Exactly. Um, how do how do the listeners find you? Uh, Instagram. What's your uh, Instagram account? So I am Linda G Fit Tips. They can go there. Okay. Or they can go to uh, Linda G Realtor. Okay. Um, and find me there. Perfect. Are you and on Facebook as well. I'm on Facebook as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted. Nope. That was basically where I was uh, going with that. So Yay! I thank you very much uh, for, uh, I told you that it was going to be about an hour and I think we're at an hour and 45 minutes. So um, it's what happens when you get an Italian and a Jew together. <laughs> um, Same thing. Yeah. There's nothing. It's going to be on time. Um, so thank you very much for spending the time with me. Um, so excited. I have so inspired now. I have always, I want to go build a building. Good. I have always looked up to you and Tyla. Um, you guys have are in part of, I have a list of mentors. Um, and, and some don't know they're my mentors. Um, but you two, would fit into that category. Oh, thank um, you. Of, I really appreciate of that. Teaching, um, teaching me how to uh, learn to express myself within the industry, um, what a career meant to be in the industry. It was never a job. It was always a career. And so to be able to um, have you sit in the hot seat um, was a huge honor for me. Oh, so don't make I'm, me cry. I'm very don't excited. make me cry, Mike. Well, I did good. You, you lasted, uh, Tyler lasted, I think about three minutes. And, and I she got, started crying. Yeah. Cry. She's, yeah. she's got a lot going yeah, on. In exactly. That, yeah, yeah. She's got a lot but, of junk in the trunk. Yeah. yeah. But, and um, I don't mean in her bum. No, no, she's tiny. Yeah. She's um, very tiny. <laughs> Um, so no, we, you did good. So again, thank you. Thank the listener. Thank you listeners for, uh, following along this journey and we will keep you posted on where this, um, information will take us because I, I see some really good things of coming from this. I also want to get Edwin, um, out of whatever we got to get Eddie out, he, whatever he is doing, he needs to be in the fitness industry. Yeah, he does. Um, because there, people like him, people like Vita, that it just it will never be redone, and it doesn't need to be. <laughs> That's what's great. That's true. Um, he yeah. wore spandex too. Vita or Edwin. Edwin? Yeah, Vita. Sorry, Vita. Vita's not wearing spandex. No, he's not. Yeah, Edwin did wear spandex yeah. in the day. Yes, absolutely. That was great. Uh, All right. Thank you, guys. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Where this is going to go. You good? <laughs> yeah.